This might be the only rainy day on the whole trip. I flew to Japan to find the best grip for the Nikon ZF, but first I had to try every other grip on the market. Some are good, one was terrible, but the mythical ZF GR1, the official Japan exclusive Nikon grip, 10 camera stores across five districts amidst the chaos of tourist season Tokyo, not to mention a last minute slip and fall before I found it. Two questions. One, is this the best grip for the Nikon ZF? And two, am I obsessed? I'm Jack, a scientist and street photographer, so naturally I love cameras and all of their accessories, but finding the best version of everything is taking up too much of my time. I first tried four different grips for the Nikon ZF, wasn't completely satisfied with any of them. If you're in the same boat as me, this video is for you and it should save you some time, but I'm getting worried about how obsessive I've become. It's not the first time something I loved turned into an unhealthy obsession and three years ago, I had to quit. The truth is I hate hand grips. Too metallic, sharp around the edges, and too heavy. Do you even need a grip with the Nikon ZF? My hand size is on screen if that helps. And yes, it's a little cramped for my fingers, but one hand on the lens and a good camera strap should be fine. The top dials need two-handed operation anyway. I am a dad, so I'm always holding someone's bags. So it tends to be a one-handed shooting motion for me again and again. The ZF weighs over one kilo with a lens attached, so my hands do get tired. But the first grip I ordered isn't a grip at all. It's a leather half case. Pros, it's very light, doesn't add too much height to the camera, only an extra centimeter or 0.4 inches, so it doesn't change how it fits inside camera bags. The texture of the leather molds to your hand and makes the camera less slippery, and even though it doesn't add too much to the front grip, the leather wraps around and adds a back grip of sorts. It doesn't cover any ports, has a nice leather flap to access batteries and SD cards. Cons, there's no integrated tripod base plate. As a street shooter, I almost never use tripods anyway, but it could be a deal breaker for you. This leather half case is mass produced, so the mold isn't a perfect fit. There's no metal reinforcements. It will bend over time. It doesn't add that much of a grip, so your hands will still get tied, but it is the most stylish option out of the five. I wanted to buy my first mechanical watch to celebrate graduating from my PhD. It was a big decision and in the end, I chose the Long Jeans Legend Diver. The 42mm version with date window, a lacquered black dial, loomed hands, sporty yet vintage and dressy enough that I wore it on my wedding day. I loved its story, deep ocean diving heritage from 1959, so much so that I made another purchase right away. It wasn't a watch, but instead a watch roll. Map camera is in the heart of Shinjuku, and I was already heading there to pick up my Leica. They have an amazing inventory for every brand across multiple levels, including a dedicated floor for Leica. But Nikon? All the Voigtlander lenses for Nikon sold out just like the ZF grip. Grip 4 comes from Niwa, and they've gone for a stripe of red down the side to stir up the F3 nostalgia. It even comes with a free shutter button, so great deal. Integrated quick release Arca Swiss plate, attachment points for straps, and a few quarter inch threaded holes. It adds quite a bit more size to the camera than the leather half case because of the grip. It weighs 103 grams, combination of plastic and metal, and the grip curves around the side of the camera while still providing access to the command dials. The tricky thing is there is no standard way to hold a camera camera and everyone's ergos are different. Have you seen those hot shoe only thumbs up grips? It's too flimsy and not stable enough for the ZF. How about those really cool looking retro wooden hand grips? The problem is there's so many different makers, there's no guarantee on the exact shape and wood won't mold to your hand over time. You have to try before you buy and all the grips I talk about today, the affiliate links in the description below are from Amazon with their great return policy. So use them if you'd like to support the channel. The Niwa's ergonomics are okay. A little awkward as it curves around the edge, even though it does look very cool. The bottom corner of the grip is smooth and doesn't jut out into your wrist as you're holding the camera. The fit and finish is decent, not perfect, about what I'd expect from a third party grip. Grip 3 is from JJC, who are usually great with camera accessories, but this is the worst one out of the bunch, except for one unique feature. The front grip it provides is decent. It's rounded in shape for an extra centimeter of handling, more metallic than the newer and integrated Arca Swiss quick release plate. That one unique feature, it's the only grip to have integrated 
air tag storage. A fantastic idea, although why camera manufacturers don't already have Touch ID built in, I don't know. This feature can't overcome the grip's Achilles heel. It's terrible to hold. The bottom corner of the plate juts out at an angle and pushes the entire weight of the camera directly into the palm of your hand. Immediate wrist and hand pain when I picked up the ZF with this grip. It could just be my hands, but every other grip smoothed out the bottom right corner. The JJC is also the tallest grip so far, adding an extra half an inch to the height of the camera, and it's too heavy, 122 grams. A big swing and a miss. While I came up empty at Yodabashi camera, I tried their biggest competitor, Big Camera. Tax-free shopping, extra 5% off if you pay with Visa or MasterCard, it's a great deal. It means nothing though if the grip's not in stock and of course, it wasn't. Grip 2 is from Small Rig. Nikon worked with Small Rig at launch and it really showed. Should have been my first pick, but for me, Small Rig grips have always been too metallic, too industrial, adding too much height and weight to the camera. But this time they fixed it. A quick release Arca Swiss base plate, strap attachment, quarter inch threader holes, but the main selling point to me is how thin the base plate is. It's the thinnest plate I've tried, 96 grams. Super light as grips go. The back corner of the base plate is tapered and smoothed out, so unlike the JJC, it fits in your hand without digging into your palms. The hand grip is made of a rubber silicon composite, soft to the touch, a lot more comfortable than I thought it would be. But because of that, the texture doesn't match the camera perfectly. Look, I'm just nitpicking at this point. Smorig made a great grip, kudos, but is it the best? I was running out of time on my trip to find out. Over the years, my day job took priority and I took my eye off the ball on health until my next watch, an Apple Watch. It's not mechanical, but it will let me track my steps while shooting on the street. I rediscovered street photography because it isn't just for the mind. It healed my body as I racked up steps, trekking through places in my hometown I never would have gone to except to get that shot. I felt great, better than I had in a decade. And the time I spent curating the watch roll now felt like a waste. Over the next few days on a trip, we visited different districts for every reason other than cameras. Happy wife, happy life. But in Yurakcho, Ueno, Nihonbashi, Shibuya, wherever I saw a camera shop, I would duck in and ask. Nikon ZF desu grupu wa zaiko gozaimasu. It wasn't until day eight when I finally had a spare hour. I let the adrenaline get the better of me though. I was checking for directions in the rain and I slept, stacked it, got completely soaked, but I still hobbled across the road. The salesman did seem a bit concerned at how desperate I must have sounded. Nikon ZF desu grupu wa zaiko gozaimasu. There was just one left in stock and I couldn't wait. On the street, in the rain, I put it on my ZF. But was this worth the wait? Quick aside, the only reason I got this footage is because I had the Osmo Pocket 3 in one hand. I really should have been using the Caplock PFV mount for a hands-free solution or storing the Osmo Pocket 3 in Wordencraft's new camera pouches. These are compatible with Peak Design Anchors, Wordencraft's own series of quick-release parachuter straps, and it comes in S and M sizes to fit a Ricoh GR or an X106, respectively. I'll be using the medium pouch for the Osmo Pocket 3 on my future trip it's not a sponsored video, but affiliate links are in the description below if you'd like to support the channel. The final grip, grip one, the ZF GR1. You can't get this outside of Japan unless you pay double the retail price from a reseller, so is it worth it? I used it with the 40mm Prime, bigger 35mm, 50mm, and 85mm f1.8 siblings. These lenses all weigh between 400 to 500 grams, and the grip did its job. It comes with a super thick base plate, the thickest out of any other grip that still maintains Arca Swiss compatibility and has a cutout to access the batteries and SD cards. The front grip it adds is minimal to the camera, but overall the depth that it provides is still more than the small rig. Because of the back grip. Somewhat unique out of these grips, it provides an extra ridge for you to rest your thumb at the back, a smooth tapered corner to rest the palm of your hand, and it changes how you hold the camera completely. The texture also matches the camera perfectly and the whole thing is metallic, but would I pick it over the small rig? I spent 10 years curating the best watches for sea, air, and space, but it was a Apple Watch and street photography in the end that transformed my time. I decided to quit the game, sell it all, and focus on photography because there's no such thing as the perfect collection. There's only the thrill of the chase. If I'm being honest with myself, the best part about the ZF GR1 is how hard it was to track down. It does have great build quality, but honestly, it's too heavy. 122 grams, enough to make a heavy camera like the ZF feel even heavier. 
heavier. The metallic ridges of the grip are smooth, but I personally prefer the soft silicon rubber finish of the small rig for overall comfort. It was the obvious first choice right from the start, but sadly, I like to make things more difficult for myself. Now that I've got the ergonomics right, I'm gonna figure out if the bigger Nikon 35mm F1.8 S Prime is worth it over the 40 millimeter. That video will be here. When it's ready to go, I'm Jack trying to capture the peace in each moment.